to you about Matthew 5, 13 to 16, which as you remember is the passage about salt and light. And my question to you is how do you become salt and light in the economy? And I want to give you a very easy way to start reimagining how you cast your financial votes into the market to create the kind of market that God would be proud of. And I want to talk to you first about some really interesting research that the New Economics Foundation did, which is that they wanted to find out what happens to your money when you've spent it. Is it spent? Does it disappear? Or where does it go? And what they did was they took um, the idea of a pound, a pound coin, and they followed it around. They had this great concept called blue hands, and they imagined that if you're in a community and people had blue paint on their hands, they wanted to find out how much blue paint ended up on this pound. And what they found was if you took your pound and you took it to, say, a chain, like a big supermarket or something like that, um, the pound ended up being worth only 36p to the local community because your pound went into corporate headquarters, offshore, something like that, and very little effect remained in the location where you had spent it. But they found that if you took your pound and you went into a local shop, it would end up being worth £1.76 to the local community. And this was because of the amount of blue paint that would end up on it, thinking about their blue hands. So if you imagine the journey of this pound in a local shop, you might pop in to buy your morning coffee um, at the cafe on the corner um, and you give your pound to the cashier. They pop it in the till um, and then it's a bit quiet that morning so they decide they're just going to take some petty cash and uh, go and get some milk. Um, so they pop over to the shop around the corner to get some milk. Um, the people in that shop uh, pop this pound into their till um, and then they realise that they're out of stamps. So they take some petty cash out of the till and they go to the post office and they pop this pound over the counter for some stamps. And then an old lady comes in to collect her pension and uh, gets the pound uh, from the post office and she goes and treats herself, uh, maybe to some flowers from the florist. And the florist thinks, gosh, I'm having a slow day, I think I'll just pop out and get my hair cut. And the pound ends up in the hairdressers. So as you can see, the pound is rotating around the community, creating a halo effect economically. So my first thing about being salt and light is to think really carefully about where your money goes. Is it spent? And the idea is to try and keep your pound in circulation for public good for as long as possible. The other thing you can do apart from shopping locally is to start gaming your bank statement. And this is a very specific activity which is about trying to imagine that when you get to the pearly gates and meet St Peter, he wants to know how you have performed as an economic citizen. And the way he assesses that is he gets you to show him your bank statement. I'm not sure you can see this, let me hold it up. What I've done with mine is I've red, amber, greened my transactions. Which transactions are of the kingdom and are being salt and light and which transactions are of the devil? And this is a really, really difficult exercise to do, by the way. You have to do a lot of Googling to try and understand about supply chains from very familiar brands and to try and think really carefully, not only about your expenditure, but about where you're getting your money from. Um, are you happy with the uh, investment of your talents and your employer? Do you think you get a, a fair wage? If you're getting income from investments, are they ethically invested? Um, if you're getting any other kinds of support, um, is that well done? Um, and what other sorts of expenditure do you have? Um, are your utilities ethically sourced where possible? Um, are you giving enough money to charity? Are you giving money to support your local church? What are all the other transactions that are registered on here? And do they give you a halo or horns? So giving uh, some examples from mine, I've got some local shops here, Mellis Cheese in St Andrews. Um, I've had some cash out of the cash machine. I should say, by the way, I have taken a bank statement from before lockdown to try and make it a bit more realistic than if I was doing today's. Um, I bought some uh, clothes in m Co, which is signed up to the Ethical Trading Initiative. Um, I was very lazy and I popped to Tesco when I should have gone to a corner shop, really, to support them, so I've given that a red. Uh, not that Tesco don't do a cracking job in the community, but again, there is the pound effect with them that a lot of it goes um, into central operations. 
I've given myself an amber for some eBay purchases. Um, I'm really not that enamoured of Amazon and eBay because of their really appalling tax citizenship. Um, but PayPal um, and eBay are transforming the lives of small traders um, and therefore um, I've given myself an amber rather than a red because I am buying secondhand to support small traders there. Um, I've given myself lots of greens for charity shopping. That's the ultimate, ultimately good thing to do because you're giving money to charity as well as uh, buying recycled clothes essentially. Um, so that's a, a very good thing to do. Um, I've made some donations here. I've bought some uh, bakery goods from a local baker's. Um, I've had my payment in from my job. I work for a charity, so that feels good. Um, I've been to the local co-op, um, which is good. Um, I've given myself a bit of an amber or a red for my phone bill, because I think my phone is probably using metals that aren't entirely ethically sourced, and um, there are some concerns about some of the phone companies, so I need to look on consumer.org to see if there are better options there. Um, and there are a couple of ambers I've given myself where I was in a rush at King's Cross and just whizzed into one of the chains to get some food for the train. I went again, I should have thought ahead about that and taken the time. Um, and I'm slightly worried that I patronised an outdoor uh, clothing specialist, which I think um, isn't so ethical on their supply chain. So as you can see, it's, it's a bit sobering having to do this exercise because you notice all kinds of behaviours in your expenditure, but you can't really hide from your bank statement. It is... It is an, exactly what you do every day and where your money goes. Um, so my encouragement to you would be not to freak yourself out next time it arrives, either via email or on your mat, um, but just very gently have a look at it and see if you could red, amber, green your bank statement. Um, would you be happy to share it with your spouse, your family, your vicar, your friends, your neighbours? Um, if not, why not? What is shaming you about it? And if you were to take each red and turn it to an amber, if you were to take each amber and turn it to a green, if we all did that, if we were all salt and light in the economy, we would find that we were establishing the sort of economy that would make St Peter really proud. So good luck with that. <laughs>